welcome back to Damon's Metal Casting. This video is going to be a fun video. Viver, who makes equipment and tools, contacted me through email and said, hey, we'd like to have you test out one of our electric furnaces for melting metal. I said, that is absolutely awesome. Go ahead and send it to me. So this is what they sent me. I already unboxed it, so you don't have to see an awkward unboxing. Uh, the unit that they sent me is a 1,350 watt unit. The max temperature is 1,150 degrees Celsius which is if you're in the US, it's 2,102 degrees Fahrenheit. The unit also has ceramic insulation. So it's pretty much good to go out of the box and it's little heating coils are down in there and I'll get a close up there. So that way you can see the heating coils inside. Um, the items included that come with this unit, uh, of course, the manual. Uh, we have a 110 power cord for the United States power. We have lifting tongs to get the crucible out of the furnace. Beaver also included some uh, leather gloves to protect your hands. Uh, protection is very important when you're dealing with hot metals. I'd probably also suggest maybe getting more protection uh, even for your face. You don't want to have any hot metal splash on your body. They also included the crucibles. This is a one kilogram crucible. Let me go ahead and get my old man glasses on and, and I'll tell you how big the opening of the crucible is. So this one is a, zero out the caliper. This one's about 1.7 inches in diameter. The larger crucible, which is supposed to be the three kilogram crucible, is slightly larger. It looks like it's about a 1.8 inch in diameter crucible. Another item they sent is a graphite mold. So if you're into silver and gold reclaiming, they sent a, a mold to make small ingots from, or maybe you just want to go ahead and uh, scrap some copper and make some small copper ingots or aluminum ingots, but that's pretty cool. They sent a graphite mold to start out with. So I'm really excited. This electric furnace has quite a range of temperature, which means, you know, in most of my videos, I cast aluminum, but I think in this one, I think we're going to go ahead and use various metals and see what metals we can cast with. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a die cast zinc from my son's cap gun. It broke and so I thought we'd go ahead and start with the lower melting point of metals. So we're going to cast a star on this one. Right now I'm just packing up the mold. There's the parting powder so I can get the mold apart. And I'm filling up the back side. Now you can see I already put the traces for the zinc to flow and now I'm closing it up. There I am loading the zinc in there. And we're going to go ahead and set the furnace up and it's all loaded. There's still more zinc I want to load, but this is good enough for now since the crucible's full. This electric furnace from Beaver is really simple to operate. Basically, there's the on-off switch. There's a U button, which allows you to go ahead and change the temperature. Um, when you're done changing the temperature, you just go ahead and hit the P button, and it locks it in, and the unit's going. So now I'm just adding more die-cast zinc. The humming that you hear is the electric coils that turn on and off to heat the crucible. The die cast zinc did melt, but it's not very runny. So we're going to head and turn the temperature up so that way it pours a lot easier into the mold and makes a better casting. I believe the temperature that I raised the crucible to is about 500 degrees C. It seemed to have a really good consistency for pouring at that point. One thing you'll always want to do is after you're done pouring your metal out of your crucible and getting all the metal out, you want to go ahead and put it back into your furnace so that way it has time to adjust and slowly cool down so it doesn't crack and you'll get a longer life out of the crucible. All right, let's go ahead and open this up and see how this zinc star turned out. It's kind of hard to tell at first. Yeah, it looks really good. Looks good. So I went ahead and polished it up and this is what we ended up with. It's pretty good for zinc. Didn't know zinc could be that shiny. 
The next pattern I made for casting is a Tai Chi symbol. So we'll go ahead and cast that up in Zamic and see how that works out. Here's the mold pretty much all packed up. And you can see how well the cavity looks. It came out pretty good. All right, all the lines are cut for the Zamic to pour into it. Another casting we're gonna do on this one for Zamic is gonna be a heart. Again, everything's already cut into it. It's ready to go ahead and button up. All right, so here's my ingot of Zamic, but I should have made it smaller. It's gonna take quite a bit of time to melt that down and you're supposed to put in smaller pieces of ingots and it even says that in the manual. I realized that later on. Again, this electric furnace from Viver is real simple to use. You basically just turn it on. And then you go ahead and hit U so you can set the temperature that you'd like to go ahead and cast at. I think we're going to do about 500 degrees Celsius on this casting. And now we just hit P to lock it in. And here it goes. So at 15 minutes, the unit did achieve the inside temperature of 500, but not necessarily the crucible. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half for that Zamic to melt. And again, my fault, if it was smaller chunks, it probably would have melted a lot quicker. All right, the Zamic's fully melted, and we're going to go ahead and pour it. The Zamic is a mixture of zinc and aluminum, and it's a fairly decent casting metal. And that crucible made enough for two pours of those casting flasks. All right, let's go ahead and open these up and see how the Tai Chi symbol and the heart turned out. Pretty good. Just, yep, that turned out pretty decent. And the heart turned out good as well. All right, here's the Tai Chi all polished up. Unfortunately, it looks like I got a little bit of loose sand in the mold, and that's what made the pitting. Next up is check out that heart. I gave the top of it a little sanding, but man, look at that. It looks like a mirror. You can even see the camera in it. So going up the temperature scale, this fluoro de lis is going to be cast in aluminum. It's not just 10 can aluminum or regular aluminum. The aluminum that I'm gonna use has been used before and actually has been used to cast car parts. It needs to have silicon in it for it to really pour well. So I think a lot of people when they cast aluminum at home, they just kind of use whatever aluminum they find. And it really works out better to find an alloy that's high in silicon content that has used to have been uh, casting before and uh, recycle that or reuse that. It makes really good castings. Again, the aluminum I'm putting in the crucible is an aluminum alloy that has a high silicon content, and you'll get best results out of that type of aluminum. It's been about 55 minutes. I've already added some extra aluminum to go ahead and fill up the crucible just a little bit more. So now we're gonna go ahead and get ready to pour. I'm just trying to get a little bit of dross out with a carbon rod.
And that looks like a very good pour. Look at that, hardly any flaws and looks great right out of the mold. And here's the end result, all polished up. And man, that is a great casting. That turned out good. So this next symbol is a symbol of longevity. I think it would look really neat to be cast in bronze. You can kind of see the paint puckered on it, but I think it'll actually give it some character and kind of make it look a little rustic. So there's the mold cavity. And we'll go ahead and get this buttoned up. Here's the silicon bronze ingots I'm gonna use. I cut them down because I learned my lesson from the last time I didn't cut an ingot down. So hopefully these will melt pretty well. I'm gonna let the crucible sit at a low temperature for 10 minutes before I ramp it all the way up. After an hour and a half total, the bronze is liquefied inside the crucible, so it's ready to pour. Let's see how this pour did. I've never poured silicon bronze before. Here we go. Oh yeah, that turned out pretty good. Yeah, that was a clean pour, real clean. This is the polished silicon bronze and I can guarantee I'll be casting more of that in the future. That looks great. First off, I'd like to thank Beaver for sending me this electric melt furnace free of charge to test out. Second, Viva has sent me an affiliate link to put in the description section of my YouTube video for 5% off an electric melt furnace if you'd like to purchase one. So, after all this testing, what do I think of it? I think it's great. I'm going to use it in my future videos. The melting point that we started at was low for zinc, and we worked our way up to aluminum, and then all the way to silicon bronze at 1100 degrees Celsius. Was it easy to use? Yes, I just took it out on the back patio, plugged it in, put my metal inside the crucible, and then set the temperature and then it was ready to go. So the only thing I didn't get to test was just how long it's gonna last. And that's just like any new product. But you know, keep watching my channel and I'll be using this in my videos. So thanks again, Beaver, for sending me this electric belt furnace. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again, have a good day.